from the Fox 10 Gulf Stream. This is Next Weather. All right, thanks for joining us for Next Weather. And I'm here with meteorologist Nicholas Herboso, and we are talking about the new hurricane season forecast, but it's not just that. This is something we've been watching for a while. Mm -hmm. And you've probably heard the, the light. You know, we had this last year. Everybody was saying that the water temperatures are way above normal. They're way above normal, but not all the conditions were favorable for tropical development. This year, they're more abo above normal than last year, and last year was a record breaker as far as the water temperatures are concerned. And we also have that potential with the upper level winds for some bad storms this year. Yes, and I, this has been, you can see the forecast here, the 23 named storms from Colorado State, 70 to 25. And we get this this question every single year. It's like, oh, it's always, it's always a bad forecast. It's always a bad forecast. Well, I was thinking about it, like I, I did a two o'clock live today on our Facebook and stuff, and I was like, well, okay, Last year, we were kind of like, okay, this could be kind of bad, but we really didn't know. Right. Because we had El Nino, and El Nino was very much the, El Nino does not promote hurricane activity in the Atlantic, period. That is, that is just what happens. But whenever you have that counterbalance of really warm waters, it, it creates a little confusion. So I think a lot of people are coming off of that, plus we've had some active seasons to where you know, you're, you're, you're thinking along that lines of, oh, it's always been active. But this one, for once, the data is actually kind of like, oh, this is, this is a decent bit here. So we have a La Nina this year. Yes. And we have the water temperatures that are hotter than they were last year. And last year was a record breaker. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's interesting that NOAA puts out that forecast and it's a general range, mm -hmm. but the number of major hurricanes it looks like the median on that is about five and a half major hurricanes yeah. and normally we would see three. So let's talk sea surface temperatures right now. And this is roasty warm for May, specifically in the Gulf. Yeah, I mean, we've been getting this has this has changed since this morning. Uh, like yesterday we were in the upper 70s um, at the two buoys just offshore there. But now I'm going to go zoom out to the big, big shot here. We've I've seen more pink showing up on this day by day. And one of the reasons behind this, we've had um, now a ridge that's been over the Gulf for a while in Mexico. I mean, we've, we've been talking about uh, some record heat over Florida, record heat over Mexico, and that thing's just sitting there. That round circle over Mexico, which is just to the south of Mobile and mm -hmm. just to the south of Houston, is an upper level ridge, and that is causing the Gulf to heat up substantially. And this pattern's been very persistent, and it looks like it's going to continue in the forecast. So that's adding into the equation. Now, again, last year we had this prediction of an above average season just based mm -hmm. on water temperature and it didn't totally verify because the upper level winds were hostile but and the other thing that's a controversial topic and it's gotten politicized mm -hmm. is the uh, water, the, uh, the water temperatures and then the whole global warming thing mm -hmm. and some people don't think it's happening or they think it's just a political movement or whatever but I mean the, the Atlantic yeah. is off the charts hot. This yes. is a fact. It is a scientific fact. It is not political at all. Mm -hmm. And like charts like these that are like the sea surface temperature what we call sea surface temperature anomaly charts. Right. The departure from average. Those we can see really well. We have this long term average over 30 years and in the blue there you see that's water cooler than that long-term average right in the orange it's water warmer than that long-term average and you compare the anomaly maps now to previously and there is a difference what you're seeing there in the Pacific Ocean that blue streak that is La Nina right and that, it's developing. Yeah, that's the La Nina pattern, which means that winds could be more favorable for tropical storm formation in the Atlantic. And if we look up into the Atlantic, the water temperatures are mostly in the orange, way above normal. That's, yeah, yeah, two, two, two degrees. Plus. And this is in Celsius, too. So this is, and a lot of times, mm -hmm. the reference in Celsius. That two degrees Celsius does not seem like a lot, but it actually is a it's lot. It's like and four it, degrees Fahrenheit yeah. or five. And you think about, this is the ocean we're talking about. This is a large amount of energy um, and it's just really impressive to see these kinds of numbers uh, from the main development region that's where all of those storms track right through uh, 
We mentioned Colorado State a lot because they put out this hurricane forecast. Dr. Philip Klotzbach with Colorado State. This is an interesting tweet that he put out um, and it says the current Atlantic sea surface temperature anomaly pattern, which is what we just looked at, matches up almost perfectly with the May sea surface temperature pattern from histor historically associated with busy hurricane seasons. This is using a thing called ACE, which is essentially a grading score for how, how crazy were the hurricanes that year? And the map matches really well. It's the kind of setup, it's where the warm waters is that is interesting. Yeah, it's not necessarily how warm is the entire Atlantic, but where is it warm? Yes. And it's warm in the development regions. So yeah. that's, that's what the concern is there. And um, yeah, this thing is happening. I mean, the globe is warmer and the Atlantic is even warmer. And the warmer the water, that can mean more tropical activity, but there are other factors. What do you have as far as atmospheric yeah. moisture? What do you have as far as upper level winds? And it looks like those ingredients may also be in play this year. Doesn't mean that Mobile, Pensacola, Gulf Coast, Central Gulf Coast is going to get a direct hit from a major hurricane. It just mm -hmm. means the odds are a little greater that we may have something to deal with. Yeah, and it, it's, a, it's a big balancing act because in all honesty, we look at these factors and stuff, we look at these long-term forecasts, but there's a lot of uncertainty with these long-term forecasts. And, uh, you know, I'm just, this is a little bit more evidence just to kind of go over it. Uh, this is a chart, that red line is last year. Remember how we said last year was warm? Well, that blue line is this year. This is for the Gulf of Mexico, kind of averaging all the temperatures out. That black line's the average. Long story short, we're above average. Ocean heat content, which is essentially the depth of the ocean water, above the lines. Uh, let's go to the Caribbean. We're above the chart. Let's go to ocean heat content in the Caribbean. We're above the chart. Uh, let's go to the main development region in the middle of the Atlantic where all those storms track. We are above the chart even though in the last little bit we've gone down. I think that was a Saharan dust outbreak. But still, above that red line, above last year. And above way the above the black line. Yes, so the average is, the, or the blue line in this case, look how far that is. You can argue global warming or you can argue um, that this is all just a bunch of hype all you want. But the fact mm. is that this is the hottest it's really ever been in, in the Atlantic and in the Gulf and in the Caribbean Sea. So I mean, we're going to have to be on guard. Of course, we're going to be here. Yeah. As a storm tracker team, we're going to be prepared for whatever comes our way this season. Mm -hmm. um, I've been here 25 years. Nicholas just just got here, but you've been living on I've the Gulf lived Coast here forever for your whole life, and, and 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 went to school at South. And then we've got meteorologist Michael White, mm -hmm. meteorologist Matt Barentine, who's been here about 20 years. Michael White about 15. Uh, Jennifer's been with us through some storms. So, mm -hmm. you know, this we're this is something we've all seen before as far as the potential for storms, but we've never seen this great of a potential and so it's got my attention that we're yeah. going to have to watch out this year. And we say all of this and I think people do get a little bit nervous sometimes. So and I had a, I listened to this great discussion from a few other meteorologists and, and storm trackers across the nation and the point brought up was all somebody needs to do is take one step. Like take take one preparation step. Look at where your evacuation, are you in an evacuation zone? Right. There's a step in the right direction. Uh, and I mentioned this yesterday, like double stock your pantry. Make sure you've got the simple things like non-perishables or like get in contact with some relative that you know about like, hey, if a hurricane were coming, can I go stay with you? You know, and small it, tips. If you've got a house that's right near the coast, hmm. that's where you would want to make sure you are able to board up. Boarding up is not as essential when you live in town. Hmm. But if you're on the immediate coast at Dolphin Island, uh, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Perdido Key. We're not telling you to board up right now, hmm. but do you have the boards? <laughs> yes. And do they? Because you're fit? not going to be able to find them right when the, the hurricane. Do come. you have the ply locks clips or whatever you're going to do to affix the the panels to your house? I mean, what? You know, it's Memorial Day weekend, and what you're thinking about right now is I want to take the boat out. I want to go to the beach, but. Once you kind of get through the weekend, it'll be a good time to start thinking, yeah. you know, do I have everything I need in case we have a storm? Am I going to be like Sally and just leave my boat in the water down on Ono <laughs> Island and then wish I didn't? Yeah. Or I, am I going to have a plan in place where I can go get that boat and pull it and bring it into town and those kind of things? We because think about it now. Don't get it like we do our best to keep the forecast good, but there are situations where things change. 
it is weather that we're talking about. I think back to Hurricane Otis a few years ago in Mexico. Tropical storm to Category 5 like that. It was not in the Hurricane Center forecast, but it, the environment was still there. Then next thing you know, Mexico gets hit with a major hurricane. So not saying that's going to happen, of course. All this is us being kind of hypothetical, but you have to be able and get yourself in a position to take quick action. In 04 and 05, we saw some bad storms and we had Ivan, we had Katrina, which we really just got the edge of mm -hmm. here in our local area. And a lot of the storms kind of were losing steam as they as they came in. But Hurricane Michael was an example of a storm that was intensifying upon landfall mm -hmm. and Sally got stronger as it came in too. And with these higher water temperatures, we may see more rapid intensification mm -hmm. where, you know, you're like, okay, it looks like we're going to be dealing with a category two and it ends up being a three. And of course, the Safter Simpson scale is so limited anyway. But, you know, you have to be aware for changes in the forecast. We are getting better with forecast tracks and cones. Mm -hmm. The models are getting so much better. But things can still change. You can have a storm like Sally that had a weak steering flow environment and it really was an educated guess on where yeah. it would go versus some of these other storms where it's been more certain even two or three days out exactly where it'll come yeah. ashore. But we're always working to keep track of it. That's right and uh, hopefully this shed some light on the water temperature thing. In the meantime it is Memorial Day weekend. And our Saturday forecast, isolated showers. Sunday, no rain. Monday, isolated showers. We'll get a little front Tuesday, and that may knock down the humidity some next There's week. There's a chance to, to go do some things. <laughs> right. So next week, once you get through the holiday, you can be thinking about, all right, so have I cranked my generator in the last year? And what does I need to change the oil in it, put a new plug in it, get some fresh gas in it, whatever? Do I have the panels I need to board up my, my home? or? Do I have what I need as far as non-perishable food items, water, and do I know where I might go if I needed to evacuate? Do I have relatives? Can I can I go ahead and you know kind of book a, a place to stay somewhere to the north, you know, in the inland spots where you would have a, a place to go if you're in an evacuation zone? And knowing your elevation is important too, because when we start talking about storm surge, you know, if you're in an area that could be inundated, and we say, hey, the storm surge could be 10 feet or 15 feet or 20 feet, back can kind of clue you into is this is not one to ride out. I'm going to have to hit the road. And that's a simple look up. That's right. the small, small actions you can do on your phone. So right. all good stuff. Well, have a great holiday weekend. Thanks for joining us here on Next Weather.